Hello guys, I'm Bartosz and here is Olga. Hi everyone. Uh, today we're gonna have our new Frontend News episode with six news. We hope you, you are glad to see us again today. So what we have today? Uh, okay, so first we're gonna start with Angular version 14. The second one is Storybook 6.5. The third news will be Bootstrap 5.2 version beta. The fourth is Cypress 10. Another news will be Meteor 2.7.3. And the last one is Next.js RFC layout. Olga, how was your week? This week I had more parties than during the whole year. Really? That's amazing. Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a birthday party and it wasn't Bartek there. Sorry. My God. <laughs> Why you haven't invited me? <laughs> I, I have to make one more party. Okay. So happy birthday. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, the next present for my birthday is first news. First release is Angular version 14. The first news which we're gonna uh, talk about is the latest version of Angular, the 14th. It was released on 3rd of June and we're gonna make a short overview on this update's latest changes and features. The first thing to mention are standalone components, which is uh, which in version 14 are in developer preview. It means that you cannot use it for production purposes, but you can try it out and share with your feedback with Angular community. The most important thing about standalone components is that uh, they allow you to directly add imports such like components, directives, pipes, modules to the component without using ng module. In addition that you can generate such components using the new ng generate component standalone command. The next big thing from Angular version 14 are typed reactive Angular forms. This new addition adds strict typing for the Angular reactive forms package and resolves one of the most demanded GitHub issues. It it basically means that uh, now all the values inside the arrays, form controls, groups are completely type safe across the entire API, which basically enables safer forms, uh, especially for deeply nested, more complex cases. What is more, you can gradually add typing to your existing forms with full backwards compatibility using ng update command, which should automatically replace all the form classes with untyped versions. Another thing worth mentioning regarding the latest version of Angular are CLI enhancements, and we're gonna focus now on some of them. The first one is uh, ng completion, uh, a new feature which provides auto completions in real time when you type a command. So you can set up this also manually by, by running ng completion command. Next one is uh, ng analytics and ng cache commands, which enables printing and controlling analytics information and printing and controlling analytics information and printing all the cache information from the API. What do you think about those improvements? I think each of these improvements are really cool and everything is really heading to the right side from the Angular team. Great, so we're waiting for the next releases and more updates. Speaking about the next thing, we have also extended developer diagnostics, which allows to collect more information on templates by giving compile time warning with precise actionable suggestions. Last but not least, with the latest version of Angular, we have also support for TypeScript 4.7 as it was released a few days back. There are of course much more things to talk about you can check the full list of upgrades, new features and changes on the official Angular website. As always, all links are in the description. You are welcome to visit it and you are welcome to visit our frontendhouse.com website to read more information and to read our blog and uh, you'll find a lot of information in there. <laughs> And now we're gonna jump to the second news, which is Storybook 6.5. The Storybook team described it as their biggest release yet, which adds and upgrades lots of features like powerful interaction testing and design review workflows, which improves Storybook performance and compatibility. 
So what's in? Firstly, we are gonna mention interaction testing, which is all about allowing you to simulate and verify user behavior in the browser. It gives us all of the features of modern testing tools, which convenient workflow, especially for UI developers. The interaction panel now visualizes each interaction which is being simulated and what is more you can customize test runner via hooks API. The next thing worth mentioning, which we have already spoken about a little bit in our previous front-end news podcast, is an ability to use the new Storybook Connect Figma plugin for design review. As mentioned before, it improves communication and have plenty of add-ons for viewing designs in Storybook, the most important feature is that you can embed stories in design tools now. Another thing which we would like to speak about regarding Storybook 6.5 is faster developer experience improvements, which include faster DX, Webpack 5, lazy compilation for faster startup, faster load times for code splitter and published Storybooks. ESM support and stable version of Webpack 5 and re-architect Storybook to support modern builders, such as previously mentioned Webpack 5 and White. With Web Pack 5 lazy compilation, it is said that it improves three times faster start startup times and two times shorter rebuild times. It is now inbuilt feature in Webpack 5 and Storybook uses it to book up faster. Of course, we have much more things to check and see and if you want to read about the full list of changes and features, you can check the official Storybook website for the release notes, which is of course linked in our description. Of course. <laughs> The next news from our list, which we're gonna mention now, is Bootstrap 5.2 Beta, which was published recently and is being called the biggest release of this framework since Bootstrap version 5. And I hope you're curious, what is it about? So with the latest version of Bootstrap, we have now redesigned and refreshed uh, docs, which makes uh, everything feel brand new. Uh, the main aim of this was to better show off all of the awesome features of Bootstrap. So we have, for example, refreshed Quick Start guide, changed and refreshed a sidebar structure and improved search feature, which basically helps you navigate through the Bootstrap docs faster and easier. Another thing is that with this release of Bootstrap, all of the components now include CSS variables to enable real-time customization, easier theming and more. So the values for every CSS variables are assigned now via SAS variable, so customization via C CSS and SAS <laughs> are now both well supported. With the Bootstrap version 5.2, we have also responsive off-canvas component upgrades, which now has responsive variations. It means that uh, when you want to make it responsive, you can change the old off-canvas class, which remains unchanged and also works the same as before with any of the SM, MD, LG, XL and XXL classes. Last but not least, it has also been said that finally, dark mode is coming to Bootstrap and it will happen in the next minor release, so please stay tuned. Of course, there is much more information and features, uh, upgrades, which you can check on the official Bootstrap website linked in the video description. Are you happy that dark mo mode is coming? I think yes, because um, already Tyrone has that. And yeah, Bootstrap is finally <laughs> reaching that. So now we are going to speak about Cypress version 10 with component test in beta. It comes with reworked, modernized interface, new modern AI, which is integrated better into the overall development experience. And of course, has a lot of great features that we're going to highlight for you now. So we have a new testing type previously mentioned component testing, possibility to, possibility to easy switch between testing types without having to close the browser. It's a really cool improvement. Yeah. Uh, the new JavaScript TypeScript um, based config file, which means greater runtime possibility automatic migration from previous Cypress versions, a new onboarding experience to get up and running much more faster and more. Oh, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, so what we're gonna focus a little bit more about the most important one, which is component testing beta, directly integrated into the main app. It allows us which testing ex experience we 
launch upon launching the Cypress app, which means that we can start testing front-end components, develop web applications using the same API that we are already familiar with from end-to-end -end testing. Cypress component tests are rendered in real browser, so you can see our components rendered in, in a browser during the test, which gives you as developers a good feeling that your component is displaying and behaving as you expected. What is more, you can now use dev tools which are available to inspect your HTML modify styles and debug your code without any additional setup. You can read more about all of these new features on the official Cypress website linked in our video description as always. What we're gonna jump to now is the Meteor version 2.7.3, the latest release. It mainly brings updates to Node version regarding introduced security updates, adds supports for MongoDB version 5, which brings some break changes with the new API and upgrades Node version to version 6.0. 14.17. Yeah. <laughs> of course, there are some more changes which we're gonna have a quick look now. The first thing is that the media team made client a little bit smarter by removing the message which was being shown while importing Babel runtime package both into server and client, especially when it needs to be updated. Now it is removed from the client, so we don't need to import Babel to the client anymore, which reduces client size. Yes, that's true. Another thing are the adjustments and fixes to the accounts password list package, which fixes the token not being sent issue while calling this request login token for user function. Uh, emails are now case insensitive when comparing it on the server, and if for some reason no token is sent, a warning will be thrown. And last but not least, regarding the Meteor version 2.7.3, <laughs> is a tailwind skeleton. It means that you can now create a new media pro project with the React and Tailwind already set up, just providing the Tailwind flag. Yes, exactly, that's it. The other thing regarding Material version 2.7.3 is that there is a fixed upgrade regarding indexes in MongoDB. So now Material checks if it is an issue with the changed options of the same index, and if it is, it recreates the index, and not. Uh, it, the error will be thrown to provide the collection and the name of the index where there is a failure. And the last news for today is... Next.js RFC layouts, one of the biggest updates to Next.js since it was introduced in 2016. Whoa. The aim of this update was mainly to improve the developer experience of creating layouts that can be nested, shared across routes and have their state preserved on navigation. Generally have more advanced routing solution. So basically, what we're gonna highlight from this topic is the nested layouts which allow you to build complex application with nested routes yeah the next is server components adjustments which are optimized for subtree navigation its upcoming react feature improved data fetching which means fetch in layouts while avoiding waterfalls yeah then we have upgrades regarding react 18 features like streaming, transitions, and suspense. And finally, client and server routing, which means server-centric routing with spa-like behavior. We highly recommend you to check and read about all of these new features and updates on the official Next.js website, where you can find a rich explanation about each of the above mentioned topics. Yeah. And that's all for today. Really? <laughs> Already? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. See you next time in front and news episodes. And you can check other videos on our channel. See you. And also, don't forget to visit frontendhouse.com, our website. Bye. Bye bye. And thank you. High five. High five.